Welcome to the College Football Bros, the podcast that's waited too long for football. And now, here are your hosts, Michael, Ryan, and Trey Newman. Welcome to the College Football Bros podcast. I am Michael Newman, and I'm joined by the brother who is at Ryan F. Newman 1 on Twitter. That's me, Ryan Newman. And by the other brother, who is at 3 Newman. That would be me, Trey Newman. All right, we have finally made it. It was a a longer offseason than usual, but week one is here. And it doesn't look like any of the big sites like ESPN, Yahoo, CBS are doing their their pick'em pools, at least not yet. So we decided to take matters into our own hands. So we are uh, setting up a a pick'em pool and... Each week, we're going to post a link to social media with uh, a form where you can make your picks for the for the upcoming weekend. And we're going to post a link to week one in the show notes for this episode and on Twitter uh, at CFB Bros. And the winner of this pool is going to get six months free access to our Patreon. And just a uh, shout out to Joel, one of our patrons who has put this whole thing together. He's going to be the one you know, tabulating the standing. So thank you, Joel. Yeah, Norris. And by the by the way, the first game starts Thursday night. So when you're listening to this, go uh, go to our Twitter, go to our Instagram. We're going to post it everywhere and make your picks. Indeed. And speaking of of picks, we have got an ad for my bookie. Great segue, Trey. Great segue. <laughs> hey, you got to make your picks. You might as well make them in our pool, and you might as well make some money off of it too online. My bookie. Winning season returns at my bookie. In fact, winning season means doubling your first deposit. Winning season means survivor, super contests, squares, lots of action. At my bookie, winning season means hitting all your parlays and props with your feet up, watching your team beat their rivals. It's time to celebrate college football and the NFL season. So you can invest in your intuition. You use the promo code CFBROS and you double your first deposit, new players can get up to $1,000 in free play. So it, it's designed to add more excitement to the to the football season that you love, and now you can bet it. From live betting to championship futures, every play that you want can be made at my bookie. It's easy. It's simple. Make your picks. You can win big, and you collect your cash. So use promo code CFBROS, and you double your first deposit. So your winning season will begin today at my bookie. Awesome. Great. Uh, one more thing before we get to the to the news is just wanted to expand on, on our Patreon, what you get with that. So two main things. First, you get access to our bonus episodes. And we have, I counted, nine evergreen episodes in the in the backlog. So instant access to those. Plus, we're recording tonight a really fun trivia episode about the the last decade uh so that'll be fun ryan against trey and then you also get access to our discord server which is just a an app where the three of us and all the patrons just talk football talk betting gets really fun during the season but even in the off season we've just been shooting the breeze talking basketball anything so basketball uh, bros the basketball (laughs) bros so yeah, if you enjoy what we do, want to support us, appreciate that. That's patreon.com slash college football bros. And that's five bucks a month. All right. Yeah. Enough great, of that. Great camaraderie. Let's, I love it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, let's get to the news. So <clears throat> Georgia quarterback Jamie Newman came out today as we're recording this, is opting out of the 2020 season to focus on the 2021 draft. Kind of came out of nowhere. What are your guys' thoughts on this? It's a little late in the game getting here close to the season. Um, I, I'm assuming, I don't know, I guess I don't, I shouldn't assume anything, but maybe he was the, uh, the uh, Kirby Smart was already informed of this decision a while ago. Maybe he, not Georgia knew, but just didn't announce it or who knows. I mean, I, I don't guess. know. There's been lots of guys the last week or so that have yeah. been making their Fair decisions. Enough. It's big news. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I guess I'm not, I never, would never get mad at anybody for opting out. It's not a, you know that's his totally their choice but it's just surprising i guess because he made the move to try to get you know to go to a new school make bigger exposure top top tier program prove himself and then now he's not giving himself that chance i mean he's he's gonna get drafted 
you know, for sure, pretty much most likely, but he had a chance to play himself up in the draft and, you know, maybe potentially make himself a lot more money, but yeah, it's, you know. it can go both ways. You know, he I mean, he still could move up, and, but yeah, who knows? He could still end up being a first round pick. You never know. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, it's a lot of maybe things change well and whatever, but exactly. But, uh, but also, like I said, he could have played poorly and dropped. So I, I respect I mean, it. He's like pretty, what do you mean? Maybe, maybe a second round pick right now, something like that. So I saw I McShay, seen, McShay had him like the sixth quarterback. Yeah. Uh, okay. I've seen him like higher. I've seen him like fourth or fifth yeah. quarterback, I think. Yeah, exactly. He's going to be in that range. It was, uh, yeah, but it was, that's shocking. And it's shocking for not only Newman, I was looking forward to to seeing him play at Georgia. And, you know, especially with the talent that he would have had around him compared to what he had at Wake, not that Wake was any slouch, but at least at Georgia, there, there was some real potential this year for them to have a big year. And not saying they still can't, but uh, I was really excited to see all those pieces align there. Yeah, so now, I mean, it's becomes big, of course, that JT Daniels had transferred there in the offseason from USC. He's been, of course, granted uh, immediate eligibility. He's the the big favorite to be the starter. Of course, he right now still has not yet been cleared for full contact. He tore his ACL at the beginning of last year, I guess still kind of at the end of recovering from that. But he has been scrimmaging and practicing, so There's, you would think yeah. in a few weeks he'll be ready to go, but... Yeah, it's that's a long yet. time to recover now from an ACL surgery. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's been a while, so would be very surprised if he wasn't ready week one. They do play Arkansas, so, you know, nice way to ease. Might not need season. him. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he's not able to go, at least at the beginning of the season, then Dewan Mathis might be the most likely option, uh, redshirt freshman or the true freshman Carson Beck. And then, of course, the junior Stetson Bennett is, is still there. So, yeah, uh, we'll see if it comes to that. Um, But there's also been, like we said, a a slew of players in the last few weeks that have been deciding to to opt out of the season. Which ones have have stood out to you guys? Uh, I'm just going to take LSU as a squad here. Um, Oof, man, it's been rough. I mean, they just don't have anybody. Is Derek Stingley's like the only guy who's coming back? Otherwise, yeah, they lost. Who are these guys? It's going to be a brand new squad. Uh, Jamar Chase decided that he's going to opt out and just kind of prepare for the draft, which you know, thank you, Chase. Like, why would you risk? I mean, you know, I'm not, if he wants to play, that's great, but it's hard to risk yourself when you're already a surefire top 10, maybe pick or something. He's Mm -hmm. hard to get much higher than he did and have a better year. So completely understand where he's coming from opting out. And if you're LSU, you're just, you're bummed, but you're also like, well, you want us a national title. So we get it. It's okay. I think most fans, I think most fans are understand it. Exactly. Uh, so he's gone. Tyler Shelvin, their big D tackle, big nose tackle. He's big boy. He was. Uh, he's a force. He's not. He's not going to play this year. And then uh, Kari Vincent, uh, DB. Uh, he's also. He's played a lot of football for them uh, past couple of years. So he's going to be out too. So three major losses on top of what they already lost. So you know, yeah, yeah. tough. Tough for Eddie O's crew. And speaking of squads, I actually looked at UCF. They announced mm-hmm. yesterday in the last couple of days that 10 players are actually opting out. Um, it's a pretty alarming number. Now, there were two defensive starters uh, and then the quarterback, Daryl Mack, who he he wasn't going to be the starter this year, but he had he started a, a handful of games over the last couple of years. Those were the notable ones. But the other guys, even though they weren't starters, that's that's 10 guys of worth of depth. Yeah. I mean, that's a significant mm-hmm. a blow. Uh, and UCF, they were, and I don't know if they still are, the, the preseason AAC favorite, and they were ranked number 21 in the polls, but that's uh, it's going to be pretty tough to overcome. Yeah. Especially in a year when, you know, you could have players being quarantined, depth becomes mm-hmm. so much more important. And LSU, I know they're down to like 70 scholarship players, so they can't afford to to lose many more guys. And I the, the one thing that to keep in mind is with the less amount of teams – if an AAC team were to go undefeated, it's probably about as good of a chance as ever to to get into the playoffs. So yeah. and as that's, strong that's as tough. the AAC is this year, yeah. right? Memphis, Cincy, SMU, mm-hmm. heck, Navy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some, a lot. There's some good ones. Uh, okay, well, I'll add on a couple more guys that are sitting out. Uh, one was from a few weeks ago. Kennedy Brooks at Oklahoma, the running back. He had a thousand yards last year, so that's a big loss. 
especially because Trey Sermon had already transferred to Ohio State. So that yeah. running back uh, core right. taking a hit. Yeah, they'll be fine. I'm sure, <laughs> you know, TJ Pledger <laughs> yeah. will have seven yards of carry, but, yeah. you know, still, it hurts yeah. a little bit at least. And then uh, the other one is is more recently Memphis running back Kenneth Gainwell had 2,000 all purpose yards last year as a freshman, retro freshman, and uh, 16 touchdowns. So, he was obviously a big part of their offense on the ground and as a as a receiver. So that's that's a big blow. They do have pretty good depth at running back, and they seem to churn out really good ones. So hopefully, it uh, they've been really good at skill positions. Yeah, hopefully they'll they'll be able to handle it well. Uh, but okay, moving on to one more piece of news, which is just craziness in the Big Ten. Tons of rumors, tons of Sir Yacht tweets about. The ADs trying to get an October start for for the season. Some have thrown out November, late late November as as a likely start or a possible start. I should say nothing's mm-hmm. likely right now. Uh, Trump even called Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren to to try to get the season going. What are your thoughts on everything that's happening? It's crazy. Yeah, every every day it's something new. I'm I don't know. Maybe it's I'm just a little skeptical. I'm still not fully buying into this i mean it's one thing for the coaches the players the ad's to want it but they still got to get the presidents and i feel like the presidents are the ones that are listening solely they don't listen to the outside noise they're listening solely to their their doctors and and the science research that they have at their fingerprint or fingertips maybe if if it's just the testing that's needed to to overcome it then maybe they can come up to with some resolution and then and we can see a, a fall season the one thing i will say is if if these if they say that they don't want to play because of spreading it, then I have a, a pretty serious, not a serious issue, but a, a pretty strong issue with them because some of these schools are welcoming the students back. So to me, it would be a little hypocritical to to collect tuition from the general population of students, but yet not have some of the football players play. I get there's some other circumstances, but mm-hmm. pretty fascinating. What do you think, Ryan? I just think it's a joke how the Big Ten's handled it. It's just been unclear from the get go and very non transparent. However, what do you want to? What's the opposite word of transparent? I think mean, lack of un- transparency. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, and then they did a flip flop. Kevin Warren has just been handling this bad. They haven't, he hasn't done any interviews to try to communicate what exactly their thought process was and how they voted. And like uh, now that they're thinking like late November, which how is that? much better than you know if they started like a few weeks earlier or like maybe a month earlier they could be a part of the whole college football playoff so i just talk of october 10th of uh, yeah yeah like if you had october 10th october 17th you could still fit it in and be part of the college football playoff which if you're going to play a few weeks later and at the end of november why would you not just try to do it a little earlier it just makes doesn't make sense to me like where I don't know. It, it, why would you do that? I, if the whole season ends up getting canceled anyways, at least you gave it a shot at the beginning. Like at least you gave yourself a chance. I but it just, I'm not saying they should or shouldn't. It's just if they do give it a shot, do it the right way and join with everybody mm-hmm. else. Yeah, I've. Who knows what's going to happen? But like Trey said, yeah, whatever the plan that these ads and whoever's making this push, or if they are, it's just kind of rumored. The plan that they present to the presidents obviously better be better than whatever the original plan was because like you said the their um team of doctors said that wasn't acceptable so we'll we'll see if uh circumstances have changed with testing or whatever it is yeah Uh, um okay let's uh move on to week one picks let's get into football here and we're gonna start thursday night this this podcast is coming out thursday morning so tonight we have crazy south alabama at southern miss Southern Miss is favored 13 and a half. And uh, we're, by the way, we're going to go through at the end, we'll maybe touch on the FCS versus FBS games, but for now, just FBS versus FBS. So, uh, Ryan, what, what do you think here? Yeah, game talk here. All right, finally. This is yeah. interesting, interesting stuff. Um, yeah, so for South Alabama plus 14 and a half. I'm going so to have to go 13, 13 and a half. 13 sorry. And a half. Oh, you Upt- changed it on me. Wow. Yeah, I updated the line. Sorry. Didn't Oof. let you know. Does that Did change you, your mind? I mean, I'm not gonna. 
I'm not prepared <laughs> to argue this the other way here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm still going to go with South Alabama. It's first game of the year. It, I think things are a little bit more level playing field first game out of the year. Um, I just I just think I would take a look at South Alabama. We actually, Nebraska, saw them at the beginning of last year. I just think they're going to be better across the board, really, except for one spot, and that's their defensive line. Um, that's where I think they'll actually really struggle. But Southern Miss was horrible on the ground last year running. So if there's a weakness that might not expose them that South Alabama so much, it would be, you know, a team that's this, their running game with, with Southern Miss. So I think they can get away with the inexperienced D line plus Southern Miss quarterback, Jack Abraham. He's prone to throwing a lot of picks. He threw like 15 last year. So, yeah. you know, a pick or two can change a game. Um, and Abraham's likely to throw at least one in a game. So I, I think this game could be a little more interesting than maybe some think. So, yeah, I'll take the Jaguars. Yeah, I'm going to take the points, too. I think they can keep it close, South Alabama, that is, because of their offense. They have a, a veteran group of receivers, new offensive coordinator who said they want to be more play with pace and spread everything out. I think that's going to help since their own line is a bit underwhelming, but the quick tempo can kind of neutralize that. And the defense, they have some experience to to slow down Southern Miss. It'll be a tall task. I'm not saying they're going to. They're not going to stifle them or anything, but um, and like you said, Ryan, Southern Miss turned the ball over a ton last year. So a couple get one or two. South Alabama will be right in the game, and, and they lose. Their and big if anything, receiver. if anything, South Al- the 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 uh, back door might be open late, and South Alabama can can score and and get the cover. All right, clean sweep. I'm taking South Alabama too. Their their quarterback Desmond Trotter when he took over uh, as a freshman last year. He was 10 times better than Quintez Cephas and whoever else Cephas they had horrible. playing quarterback. <laughs> I know. And and Trotter's stats were, were pretty good. So They won their um, final last three games, I think, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Maybe I'm thinking of a different team. I don't know. Yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> but, of Rice. I'm thinking of Rice. Okay. <laughs> they didn't win much last year, but... No. <laughs> but I uh, I think they'll they'll be improved at least at the at the quarterback position for sure. So against a Southern Miss defense, which had three of their best players announced they're sitting out the season, I'm I'm thinking that uh, South Alabama will keep it close, and I'm actually wow. so confident, and I'm not stalling first, to get my soundboard ready. First game of the year, locking it up. First game of the year, I am locking it up. If I can eventually, <laughs> you know, we're time. not in midseason form yet. No, there we go. Uh, All right. Yes. Moving on to Saturday, we have Middle Tennessee at Army, and the line is now Army by three and a half. What do you think, Trey? Yeah. So speaking of locks, I'm actually going to take Army and make them my lock. I I like Army. They have experience on both sides of the ball. They return a good core to their defense that was top thirty last year. Um, you know, of course, they did lose their their stud quarterback, Kelvin Hopkins. That that's tough, but they have a system in place under Jeff Munkin. I like I, their new guy, though. Yeah, they no matter you know with their their system, they seem to be almost plug and play. Obviously, it helps to have a good good guy in there, but it, they seem to be pretty consistent. Um, another reason, though, I like this matchup for Army is Middle Tennessee has to replace a lot of production, a lot of their top tacklers from last year. And they weren't good last year. They were last in Conference USA in total defense. Not not ideal. And then on the other side, I am interested to see the Blue Raider offense. Asher O'Hara returns uh, after a pretty good year at quarterback. Dual threat. Some people are excited to to see him. But in this game, like it is with most Army Army games, time of possession is going to be a factor. I think Army is going to turn out long option drives. Middle Tennessee was near the near the bottom of of time of possession last year because they're more up tempo. So I see Middle Tennessee's defense on the field for a long time favors Army. That's where I'm going. Okay, that could definitely happen. I last year both teams, Army and Middle Tennessee, had at least as of late uncharacteristically bad years. I think they're both gonna gonna bounce back in 2020. And I'm just I'm excited to see the quarterback you brought up for Middle Tennessee, Asher O'Hara. He was. Already good year one as a sophomore, thousand yards rushing, reasonably efficient passer. If he can take a jump forward, like you might expect to year two as a starter, then he'll be legitimately one of the best quarterbacks in the G5. So I'll uh, I'll just go with him and take three and a half. Yeah, no, I'm going to disagree with Michael here. I'm taking Army. Um, 
Middle Tennessee, you're just not buying them. Did, did you know last year they didn't have a single running back rush for 300 yards? Wow, That's not good. And that I mean, insane? the quarterback I ever heard of really that? Good. Right? Yeah, they. Yeah, exactly. I know Asher O'Hara well, runs a little bit, but yeah, you need a little a more help than just your QB. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and their defense is going to be young and inexperienced. And Army, they had really bad luck last year. I think they were better. They were a better team than what happened. And obviously, they had some injuries, but so they had a five-game losing streak in the middle of the year. Uh, and all of those games were decided by nine points or less. So five in a row, really close losses. And they were one and six total in those games. So I, I just think they're better overall. I think they're going to, I don't think they'll, their QB got some uh, some experience last year where Hopkins went down. So um, I like Army. Yeah, it was crazy. Remember last year before the season, Army was, it was like, are they going to go they almost beat Michigan? I guess they only had, well, yeah, they had that one game against Michigan. You probably expected them to lose, but uh yeah, really disappointing season, but they'll, yeah, I agree it that was. they'll bounce back. We were kind of mentioning, like, could Army go the distance if they beat Michigan? Remember that was right. being brought up at the beginning yeah. of the year? Yeah, because they had such an easy schedule, but they. Really I still did. stand by that. They could have, if they would have beaten yeah. Michigan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. True. Okay, uh, next game, SMU minus 21 and a half against Texas State at Texas State, and... SMU is is going to be in contention for the AAC championship this year. They won 10 games last year, returned one of the best quarterbacks in the country and Shane Bichel, Shane Bichel, as I like to call him, because I've been in love with him since freshman year at Texas. And uh, they bring back most of his offensive line, really good receiver on Reggie Roberson if he's able to stay healthy this year. So I like SMU. Texas State, on the other hand, probably one of the 10 worst teams in the country. They were not good last year, and they're 118th in returning production. <laughs> it's brutal. Yeah, not great. But I do think the offense will get better in year two under Jake Spavital, their head coach, former West Virginia offensive coordinator. And they got a transfer at quarterback out of Memphis, who is eligible this season, Brady McBride, another Brady from Memphis. Wow, Brady. Wow. Yeah, and uh, and he beat out the incumbent starter last year, Tyler Vitt. So I think that's a, a positive sign. So I think the, the up-tempo passing game they have can – take advantage of what's a, a pretty poor uh, SMU secondary. So I'll, I'll say they get a backdoor cover. Yeah, I, I don't see that happening much. Um, they were just dreadful on both sides of the ball. I know it's a second year, of, but I just, I don't know. I'm not seeing a backup QB from Memphis is supposed to come in and spark them. I'm not, I know Brady White's good, so he could be a decent all right guy, but it just, I don't know. It seems like too much of an uphill battle to compete with SMU, who's, should be scoring on all cylinders. So yeah, I'm going to go with Shane Bachel and SMU big. I'm going to take the points too. It's a little scary, of course, but Spavital, he's taken over the offensive of, or the play calling duties. So maybe that'll make a little bit of a difference this year. And you know, the second year you, you, you hope that can, that can help. And, and you bring up, Michael brought up SMU secondary. They were 125th in past defense. So I, I feel like this will be, a high scoring game and and Texas State can can do enough just enough to cover. Okay, moving on to Arkansas State at Memphis. Uh Memphis is favored 19. What do you think, Ryan? Uh I, I feel like 19 seems like a lot of points. Um especially mm-hmm. when Arkansas State, you know, they're a good program. They've always churned out good solid teams. I know Memphis is going to be a good team. They got a lot coming back. They we did mention they lose Gainwell, which is a significant significant loss but they still got a lot of firepower on offense so they're gonna put up you know i got coaxy wide receiver brady white keep they're gonna put up a lot of points so um but their defense can be a little leaky sometimes uh they've we've seen them in some shootouts for sure uh in arkansas state they have a very good offense um they prep pretty much everybody back on that side of the ball as well sounds like they're gonna do a two two qb system and both qbs proved last year they're good uh lane oh, yeah. hatcher and Logan Bonner, I think I maybe would lean with Bonner if I had the the option, but it, you can't go wrong. Yeah, um, you gonna say something there? Well, I was gonna say I would actually lean Hatcher. But that just goes yeah, to show they got. Two I like him in the bowl game, but they're they're both really. Yeah, I, there's there's no wrong answer. I think they both prove they're good. And um, Blake Anderson said that uh, Bonner will get the start, but that both of them will play. Correct. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, so I just feel like you know, kind of like you guys were saying, maybe with Texas State that. There's going to be a high, it's going to be a high scoring game. I think Arkansas State will be able to keep up for quite a while with Memphis. Um, you know, and it's it just seems like too many points to give up against a good offensive and a good program like Arkansas State. So, taking Arkansas State, and I am making Arkansas State my lock. 
Nice. I almost did the same thing because I echo your sentiments. It just seems like a lot of points. It really shows how much the the betting market is respecting Memphis this year. Because yeah. like you said, Arkansas State's a good team. Like they are consistently good, always good under Blake Anderson. And they got two really good quarterbacks. So I'll uh yeah, I'll roll with with their offense to to hang in there. Last year against SMU, they they lost by seven, kind of a, a shootout 37 30 game. So mm-hmm. wouldn't surprise me if something similar happens. I know and it is a little scary about the line. It just seems too high. Like it's, 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 it's so it's big, but I, yeah. I've got to take Arkansas state as well. I like their quarterbacks. Uh, you know, the one thing I'm, I'm kind of holding out hope for is that Memphis also has the coaching staff transition and maybe that'll, uh, yeah. cause a few hiccups in, yeah. in maybe even in the first half, just kind of getting adapting to the, the new style and, or maybe not new style, but new schemes with the new, the new staff. So that's why I'm going to take Arkansas State. I like their quarterbacks. Okay. Uh, next, we have the final game of the weekend is on is on Monday, actually. And it's the biggest game. BYU at Navy. BYU is favored one and a half, Trey. Yeah, there's been lots of line movement towards BYU this week. Um, and I, I'm gonna actually going to go away from it. I'm going to take Navy. Uh, I guess I'm sticking with the option this theme or this week with Army and Navy, but we got a total contrast of styles. You got Zach Wilson and BYU a little bit more high flying than than Navy, of course, with that option ground attack. I know Malcolm Perry is is gone, not running the show anymore for for Navy, but like Army, they've they've got that system and and it's almost plug and play um, to to a certain extent. And when I look at BYU, they have a really good offensive line, which will benefit them here but Wilson lost a big target in uh, their tight end Matt Bushman went down with injury uh, in practice that's a that's a blow and they have to replace their top three wide receivers from last year so he's going to rely on some new weapons uh, to to for for this game in particular and so I'm going to rely on a team that should control the tempo and and take Navy yeah no I mean there's certainly some concerns about the skill positions for BYU um I guess I would rather have a really good offensive line and maybe a somewhat questionable group of receivers than the than the inverse there. Um, sure. So I'm I'm going to lean with BYU. Um, you know, I think Malcolm Perry is a big loss. I know maybe Navy is come plug a play, but Malcolm Perry was pretty darn good last year. He number two was in the great. Country. He was rushing. He was rushing pretty awesome last year. And then if you go to the he flip side of Navy, their defense, their def- their nose tackle last year, Jackson Pittman was a beast. He dominated they were the the number one rush defense in the conference and it largely was due to him he was really really good so i think that's a huge huge loss as well so you know i i trust a team with a great offensive line and a quarterback that's experienced um and their defense on byu's defense they return a lot in their front seven uh so i think they're gonna have uh do okay against that option type of attacks since they can they can probably stand up against it pretty well um even though they did have some losses in the secondary not a huge concern i guess when you maybe when you're going up against navy um so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna take byu yeah i like byu the the loss of of matt bushman the the star tight end a few days ago is that's a brutal blow especially when the other receiving core is a question mark so i that part of it is a concern but everywhere else on on offense i like it you mentioned the offensive line and i think they're gonna have really good quarterback play this year so zach wilson you mentioned was named the starter he he had a sophomore slump slump last year. Injured, um, injured. He was hurt, and uh, but when his backups came in, they were really good. Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney, in the kind of small amount of time they played, both looked good. So it wasn't a sure thing that Wilson was going to be named the starter. I think the fact that he has been named the starter is a good sign that maybe he's going to bounce back this year. But even if he isn't, they've they've got the backups to to uh, you know. They always seem to have backup quarterbacks that'll come in and do fine. That's true. That's true. Tanner Mangum. Getting back to right. Tanner Mangum yeah. when he would <laughs> always get hurt. But uh, but anyway, I just I feel good about that position overall. And until I see Navy replace Malcolm Perry, I'll I won't totally trust him. So I'll I'll go with BYU too. Um, okay. Let's uh let's talk a little bit about some of those FBS versus FCS games. The one that we might all be interested in the same one. The one I'm most looking forward to is Thursday night because it's the first game. Yeah, uh, of the weekend, Central Arkansas at UAB. UAB's favored in and a half. And we watched Central Arkansas last weekend get a nice comeback win against Austin P. 
And so they're a, a very good FCS team. And I'm ex mostly obviously excited, though, to watch UAB because they're one of the favorites in Conference USA. And next Thursday, so a week from you know today yeah. as you're listening to this, likely, they play Miami. And that's there. That's going to be a huge test for Miami, especially Miami's offense, because that UAB defense should be really good. Well, and and it'll be interesting because Central Arkansas got to kind of work out some of their kinks from last week. They didn't look sharp, but maybe that'll help help and be an advantage for them going into this game. Um, but no, that that's obviously the the game to look forward to. I did the game that's not going to be competitive, but. I'm a little intrigued at least to see the team is uh, you got Houston Baptist at North Texas, North Texas is going to win hands down. The mean green will win, but how do they look in doing so? Seth Luttrell's team last year was a big disappointment with Mason fine at quarterback. And now with not the highest of expectations, I want to just see if they're going to have a bounce back year and, and set the tone, right? Man, Luttrell just, hopefully they bounce back, but if not, he might have really missed an opportunity with K State because he, it seems like, could have had that job had he uh, been able to kind of capitulate to some terms. But he elected yeah. to stay at North Texas. Yeah, those those uh, UAB obviously, but I'll, I'll go with uh, I'll just devil's advocate here. I'll say Eastern Kentucky at Marshall. I don't know Marshall's always got a good program there, but I'm kind of interested to see how they're going to replace their quarterback Isaiah Green, who you know was kind of highly thought of for a while there he had some good moments and then uh i thought he was going to kind of take off and kind of be the next really good uh mac quarterback or sorry conference usa quarterback mm -hmm. um but then he transferred so he's done for the transfer portal uh so gonna see how they replace him that's kind of a big loss but um you know i i want to say uab but i could see this little intrigue there to see how they'll they'll handle that for marshall so no one said Stephen f austin at utep huh UTEP just doesn't uh, move a whole the lot for me. Cash day there. <laughs> Poor UTEP. <laughs> More interested in the right. Jacks than that one. Yeah. Uh, that'll do it for our week one preview episode. Short one here. But be sure to join our pick and pool. Again, That's uh, you can find that the link in our Instagram bio. And we posted a, we uh, tweeted about it as well. And also sign up for uh, my bookie promo code CF Bros if you want to bet the games this weekend. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. We will talk to you next week. You've been listening to the College Football Bros. If you have any questions for the next podcast, email them to collegefootballbros at gmail.com. To keep up with the brothers on social media, like them on Facebook at College Football Bros, follow them on Instagram at College Football Bros, and for their commentary on Saturdays, Follow them on Twitter at CFB Bros. Thanks for listening.